Good evening. Thank you so much for tuning in. I'm Amita Balishanda. This is a 6.30 p.m. show that I do every single day. Uh, before we go into our topic, I must remind you that the chat window is open. Make sure you ask your questions through the course of the conversation. We'll answer as many questions as possible. Uh, today, we're going to talk about air pollution and its effects on pregnancy and uh, whether it causes uh, or is there a higher risk for pregnancy loss? Uh, because there is a study that's been published uh, in the Lancet Planetary Health Journal, which says poor air quality is associated with a considerable proportion of pregnancy loss in India. And this is what the study uh, talks about, right? They've accessed data from 34,197 mothers uh, of whom, and this is in South Asia, of whom um, at least 77% of them uh, who had pregnancy losses, and there were cases such as these, uh, were from India. And these were the key findings that they, had, they, they found. They found that an estimated over 3.4 lakh pregnancy uh, losses per year uh, in South Asia were related uh, or associated with exposure to PM 2.5 concentrations, which accounts to about 7% of pregnancy loss between 2000 and 2016. They also found that South Asia has the highest burden of pregnancy loss globally and is one of the most PM 2.5 polluted regions in the world. Now, before we go any further, there were some limitations also that have been mentioned in the study, which I must point out. Uh, the limitations in the survey data, according to the study, says that it was unable to distinguish between natural pregnancy loss and abortions. There was also underreporting of pregnancy losses because of stigma and they also note that the survey data is subject to recall bias. Having said that, this is the study that's now been published. And uh, to understand the study better and how it impacts pregnant women, uh, I have with me a gynecologist, Dr. Kiran Koilo, who's been kind enough to give us her time. Uh, Dr. Koilo, thank you so much for joining us. First of all, uh, looking at these findings, which basically says this, that poor air quality could be responsible uh, for considerable burden of pregnancy loss in the region in South Asia is what they've looked at. And 77% of the number of people they've surveyed are in India. How concerning are these findings? Thank you, Amita, for inviting me. This is a topic very close to my heart because, you know, in Southeast Asia, we have the largest amount of not only maternal mortality, but also stillbirths, miscarriage, and poor obstetric careers of women. So this is not only because of a lower socioeconomic status, but it's also due to the pollution. And I was going through all the studies. We welcome the Lancet study with all its minor faults, but it was very well done by this Chinese group. And in the past, there have been 13 such studies, but none of them have been for women in Southeast Asia. They have been for women in other countries where the pollution rate was detected. Now, how do they detect? This is a very, very intricate study because there are so many fallacies that can occur with a, such a study, but this particular study was very well done. In fact, it used satellite to actually measure the PM 2.5 levels in these areas of Southeast Asia. And they correlated it with the demographic health studies in all these areas as well. Now, a demographic health study is a sort of questionnaire which is given to women who have had their the, uh, pregnancy losses. Now, they quantify pregnancy losses as early miscarriages and stillbirth. Stillbirth is when the baby dies inside the uterus after the age of 20 weeks up to term. And miscarriages, of course, before 12 weeks when the baby is lost. So these and these the women that they took were those who already had one live birth. So it couldn't be attributed to a maternal factor. And then they sort of correlated with the response data from the demo, demographic health studies and the pollution, which was uh, ascertained by the uh, satellite. So with this, they found that there was definitely a positive correlation between the particulate matter PM 2.5 and an increase in the stillbirth as well as pregnancy losses of Southeast Asian women, of which 70% were in North India. The others were in Pakistan and Bangladesh. Now, why should this happen? What is actually particulate matter in the atmosphere? It's a combination of all carbon dioxide emission gases, carbon, then all carbon monoxide, industrial pollutants, uh, pollen, dust, asbestos, 
chemical factories, all that spew and tobacco and tobacco related. It's like a passive smoking that we are doing with so much of pollution, as you can see, especially in North India, especially when they are, uh, uh, you know, the, all the fields are being burnt, the rubber, all this accumulates in the air as solid particulate matter. And, you know, India has, especially North India and these countries, their particulate matter is far higher. Now, this particulate matter, it is known, goes through the lungs of the mother and can cross the placental barrier to the fetus. Therefore, giving rise to low birth weight, preterm deliveries, stillbirths and miscarriages. So that is the direct correlation. And I want to talk about preterm uh, births as well in relation to COVID-19 as well in, uh, in a bit. But uh, uh, talking about the study itself, there's another point that's been made and help us understand this better. Uh, because uh, the point that's been made in the study is this, that mothers from rural areas or those who become pregnant at an older age were more susceptible um, to the effects of PM 2.5 than the corresponding reference groups, which is urban and younger mothers. Is that uh, surprising at all? Or, uh, not at all. Not yes. at all. It stands to reason because uh, women in a rural area do not have good obstetric care. Hmm. You know, so most of them haven't even had an antenatal checkup. So that, that it would affect them more. Older hmm. women, of course, have a lot of comorbidities. They are more prone to get preeclampsia, hypertension, diabetes, or pregnancy. So they are also more prone to get problems with increase in the pollution. Whereas younger urban women who have access to better obstetric care and also they are very healthy when it comes to terms of carrying their babies, they are not so badly affected. So this, these are the two target groups which stand to reason very rightly so, and these are the reasons for it. And also, uh, you know, uh, let's talk about the fact that uh, the NCR region, uh, year after year, we talk about air pollution, bad air quality, especially during the winters. And to be fair, the study uh, is only between 2000 and 2016. But right. even after 2016, we've seen that the air pollution has gotten worse uh, in the NCR region. Uh, do you believe that there is an increased risk for pregnant women there? The NCR, you mean? Uh, the national capital region. Oh, you mean, okay, okay. Yeah. Yes, yes, of course, because we see that Delhi is very polluted because of all the, uh, and we see it every year. You can hardly see your hand at, above your face. We know that Delhi is a plateau. There are no sea winds to blow away the uh, uh, pollutants. And because of all the rubble uh, um, that uh, the farmers are burning, there's a potential, a perpetual haze over Delhi. Mm -hmm. So definitely NCR region, people are more prone, especially women with asthma, women who have um, comorbidities. And you know, there has been a study which also showed that with increased pollution, there's increased chance of getting preeclampsia, that is pregnancy-induced hypertension, which again results in low birth weight, intrauterine growth restriction, and stillbirth and preterm labor. So it all, you know, winds up with the same <laughs> problem with pregnant women. Uh, you know, talking about rural uh, uh, women in rural areas, uh, you said that it's not surprising, but there's an interesting question. And this was going to be my follow up question as well, because air pollution, according to different studies, has shown that air pollution is more in urban areas when compared to rural areas. So how does it add up? Because one of the questions that's coming in is, won't the rural area women be less prone to air pollution, given that air pollution is lesser in rural areas? Yeah, you know, it's an interesting question. We would uh, obviously think that definitely they would have less problem with air pollution. But there is, you know, outdoor air pollution and indoor air pollution as well. And in rural areas, everyone cooks on wood fire and chulas. So they do have indoor air pollution in mm. those areas. And that could be a contributing factor. Also, the fact that they have poor obstetric care. Okay. And also uh, talking about preterm births itself, uh, if you can help us understand how air pollution along with now, because there's COVID-19, uh, is that increasing risk for preterm birth uh, in women as well? I would say the air pollution in the COVID time has reduced tremendously. This study was done to 2016. If you do the study now in COVID time, I'm sure you'd find that the air pollution has substantially reduced. 
Hmm. There are less vehicles on the road. There is lockdown in most cities. So all the cities, we are actually breathing purer air in the COVID time. But COVID itself per se has not, and so many studies have shown that COVID, even if a patient gets COVID-19 during pregnancy, there is no um, increase in the mortality or fat fatality in these cases. The only studies have shown that preterm labor has increased, maybe because of uh, increase in the temperature or in the in febrile condition of the mother that results in preterm labor, but otherwise not because of pollution, it's because of COVID-19. And in COVID times, definitely PM 2.5, I'm sure must have reduced and the airs are much, much less polluted than in pre-COVID times. So looking at the uh, findings of the study, uh, what is your advice to women? Uh, what safety measures should pregnant women adopt? Especially if they're in uh, really toxic cities. Absolutely. So, you know, if they're, they're, again, we will classify as indoor and outdoor pollution. So let's mm. see outdoor pollution. Then they, you know, they, they are advised to go for walks, etc. Don't walk in, in, in the time where it's very polluted. And it's known that early morning and late night at dusk, there are more particulate matters. There's more pollution at that point of time. So try to walk at other times. Try to walk on a treadmill or in maybe in a gym where you would not have an air conditioned place where you would not have this outside pollution. Because the more you exercise, the more air you take into the lungs. And if it's polluted air, it will be counterproductive. That's number one. Passive smoking is also very bad. So the people around you should not smoke. That you shouldn't be having your house painted, etc. And you have to check all your houses, especially in areas where there's monsoon for mold, because mold also causes a lot of um, air pollution. So checking for mold, keeping the windows facing the road closed so that you don't have the air coming in from outside, especially if you're facing a main road. You know, taking care to exercise in air in times when there's not less pollution or places which have less pollution, that would help. And especially when there's a lot of pollen, take care because pollen is also another air pollutant and which mm. causes allergic reactions, etc. Okay, so look out for uh, possible allergic, uh, you know, uh, things that could cause allergic reactions. Right. Uh, but also, if you can tell us, then uh, would your advice also be uh, for people to perhaps leave the city if it gets worse? Uh, if, if, for instance, someone in the NCR region uh, is obviously not doing well. What happens yes. then? Should they leave Definitely. perhaps? Definitely. There are all, you know, they can go to a hill station or they can go to a place where, you know, I've, I have so many patients who come in actually from Delhi to be delivered in Bombay. Here we have the sea breeze. So even though we may have pollution, the sea breeze blows it all away. So from those regions, it's better to go to a non-polluted because we know that there is a definite relationship between uh, stillbirths, especially, you know, intrauterine growth restriction, placental deficiencies. We also see more congenital malformations in, uh, in people who come from highly polluted areas. And that the study has shown as well, the Chinese study. All right. So a couple of takeaways. You're saying that exercise at home as much as possible. Passive smoking is bad. Look out for things that could cause more allergy and check all your homes for mold as well, because that could also be your contributor. Uh, Dr. Koylo, thank you so much for uh, joining in, helping us understand this study better uh, and uh, answering all our questions. Uh, for viewers who are watching, thank you for watching. Also, if you have to take a look at that study that's been published uh, there is a link in the description below. So do take a look at that as well. Thanks for watching. Thank you so much, Amita. Thank you.